<laughs> yeah. So let's so let's dig into the what's found in the research as far as these misconceptions go and why the research showing that hey these rats got fructose and it caused fatty liver like why is that not relevant to us and what we're actually doing as humans and what we're eating. So I'd basically say there's three main things we want to consider when looking at the the research that people are citing that fructose will cause fatty liver and we did discuss this in two previous episodes. So I'll link back to those and we'll just kind of give the overview now for what's wrong with these. And then what I really want to talk about more in more detail is instead of those things, what happens when humans eat fructose containing foods and why is it not a problem? So the three main things to consider, uh, the first one is just the capacity of humans versus rats, especially in terms of our livers. And humans have a much larger brain relative to their body size than other mammals, especially rats, and use, I want to say it's like uh, maybe five times, like our brains use more than about five times as much energy as rats do, rats' brains, like percentage-wise. And then the other thing too is our livers use a huge amount of energy. They're the, they use the second most amount of energy of any organ to only the brain, and it's only about uh, like 10%, 10 to 15% less than what the brain uses. So we've got these two very, very energy-intensive organs compared to these rats, which really don't need to have massive livers or, or really well-functioning livers because they don't have a brain that they need to fuel that well. They don't have as much need to store glycogen and to use carbohydrates. So with that in mind, there's research comparing humans and, and rats and, and the livers, including enzyme production, and also just other features and qualities of them. And they've basically come to the conclusion that any research looking at what's going on in a rat liver really shouldn't be extrapolated to humans at all. Like there really can be no comparison because they're really so different in their capacities. And what we're talking about in some cases, at least, is a capacity different or a problem, you know, where it's like the liver can only store so much fructose. But when you're using a rat study to uh, to elucidate that, it's really not relevant. So that's that's the first part. The next two parts, and I'll let you uh, I'll let you uh, jump in after after I just mentioned these next two. So yeah. the next one, which is a huge one, is is endotoxin. And so in most of these studies, both in rats and in humans, they'll be giving fructose on its own as opposed to with glucose. And we don't, we and rats do not absorb fructose very well when it's given on its own. It, it absorbs much better when it's with glucose. And in nature, we only find it with glucose. You never really find fructose alone. And even looking at the ratios, it's rare that you have a major, uh, like a majorly high ratio of fructose to glucose. It tends to be very, very close. There are some fruits and, and, uh, like honey and things that might have a higher fructose to glucose ratio, but it's still not all that high. So when you take in the fructose alone, because it's not able to be absorbed very well, it ends up feeding the bacteria that are in the intestines, and those then end up producing a decent amount of endotoxin, which then blocks the liver's capacity to do uh, to use the liver to, to use the fructose effectively. <laughs> to use the liver, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it blocks the ability for the liver to use the liver. Um, so the liver can't use the fructose very well because of the endotoxin and or anything else. Well, so endotoxin is the first one, right? So and and that's been shown. Like they have these studies where they found that the mediators here with the fructose causing fatty liver are things like intestinal overgrowth, intestinal permeability, and endotoxin. And then when they give antibiotics, it reverses or prevents any of those effects. So yeah. you so you basically see feeding of fructose that normally they're saying it causes fatty liver, but when you address these factors, it doesn't end up causing fatty liver at all, meaning that it in this case, what they're showing is that it really just has to do with an endotoxin issue that's a feature of these studies, as opposed to actually being a fructose issue where that endotoxin shouldn't be a problem in humans eating fructose from regular foods. Uh, and I'll let you go. Go ahead. Well, it's, I mean, we have the graph too, if you want to pull it up, but essentially in, yeah, I'll pull that up now. Yeah. In the, the fructose, since the, our intestine can only absorb a certain amount of fructose and it's dependent upon the individual, but I think it's shown anywhere from individuals from anywhere from five to 50 grams by itself. Now, it, when you and and the reason why this is because fructose, I, I think it uses a GLUT five receptor in the intestine. I think I, if I remember correctly, it's GLUT five, um, but it uses GLUT five receptor in the intestine to to be absorbed. Now that's by itself. If if glucose is also present, then there's like a co-transport where glucose will pull in fructose together. So you can actually have like if you have glucose with your fructose, you'll have basically unlimited amounts of. Of, of fructose that can be absorbed. Mm -hmm. So when that when that fructose isn't absorbed, when there's no glucose with it, and you've reached your intestinal 
saturation or capacity, then the bacteria have access to it. And then they can essentially, they essentially produce endotoxin. And mm -hmm. uh, the, the study that I, that I was referring to, they literally, um, yeah. So the fructose will come in. This is the intestinal mucosa. The microbiome will gain access to it. And then, then you, it'll produce LPS, which is endotoxin. The LPS will upregulate or trigger toll-like receptor four, which is basically an immune receptor that senses certain components of bacteria. Toll-like receptor four specifically senses endotoxin, which is a component of the bacterial cell wall. And just to put this in context for people, the immune cells of the body sense different components of viruses, bacteria, parasites. And they recognize those components. And then it basically triggers off an alarm system, kind of like, oh, shit, there's a bacteria here. So when the body gets access or when the immune system is exposed to toll-like receptor 4, it automatically triggers the inflammatory process. Um, and then also TLL4 is, TLR4 is upregulated in conditions of fibrosis and has been shown to lead to fibrosis. But so when this TLL4 is activated at the liver, it causes the liver, it basically, or endotoxin in general, but TLR4 signaling with endotoxin upregulates a uh, cytokine, and it's not on here, but it's called tumor necrosis factor alpha. And this, this cytokine basically causes the liver to dr directly upregulate fatty acid production. Uh, that's cholesterol, that's triglycerides. So why does it do this? Well, when you have, and so that's through triglycerides and the novel lipogenesis, which is right next to it there. Yeah. Yeah. And another important feature I want to highlight here is that the endotoxin, both the endotoxin itself and all of the effects of it, the like inflammatory responses also inhibit energy production leading to that low ATP that we're seeing. Hmm. And that is what causes, and we'll, we'll get into this in a moment, well, in a few, you know, in a bit, uh, that is what causes the fructose to, instead of being converted to energy, become converted to the fats. And as you mentioned, which is huge, this is protective. This is a protective, you know, it's meant to be in a protective acute response to the endotoxin to help deal with that problem. The, the then problem comes about when this is not only when this is chronic, but it's not something we want to have even ideal in the short term or to even be happening in the short term. Of course, like it's never something we, we really want to be happening much. Um, but we are, we do have ways to deal with it, but over time, those ways come at a cost. And so this is essentially the cost. Well, fatty liver is a cost and endotoxin is a cause that, uh, can lead to this as a cost. There are a lot of other costs to dealing with a lot of endotoxin, but this is one of them. So the last piece here is that, uh, is the polyunsaturated fats. And you mentioned those real quickly, but when it comes to these problems with fructose and seeing the pathways that it activates, the inflammatory pathways, one of them that Robert Lustig points out is, is the JNK pathway, which is just a, an inflammation response and the fat production that comes with it. When there's a really great study where they blocked one of the downstream metabolites of omega sixes, a polyunsaturated fat. And when they did that, the fructose that was originally causing this fatty liver and fat production didn't do it at all. They couldn't, they couldn't like they, no matter how much fructose they were giving, the fructose was not being converted to fat. And so again, this is just another huge factor where of course, every single rat is fed a lot of PUFA. So you're going to see the situation in any study with fructose, whether it is mediated by endotoxin or not, um, or it's just a feature of rat liver versus human livers, you're always going to have this confounding variable of PUFA in there. And that's going to encourage the conversion from fructose to fat instead of all of the other places that it can be used for. And part of the way that it does that is through amplifying these inflammation signals, for example, maybe in response to, to endotoxin. That's one of the main things that the prostaglandins do which are downstream metabolites of omega sixes, uh, and and yeah, and and that's like part of their main effect is amplifying that inflammation response. So, and not in a necessary way. This isn't one of those things like you're discussing with the acute phase response where you need that amplification in order to respond to this. That's more yeah. of a more of a just feature of of the input in the environment of having a lot of PUFA that's telling us that we need to essentially that we need to encourage that inflamed state even further because we are being bogged down by the, the polyunsaturated fats. 